These Unity AI apps just keep getting better and better. Today, we're talking about Coplay. And last week, we talked about Unity MCP. This is just the next step up. So if you enjoy an MCP server or coding with something like Copilot or Cloud Code, you have to have a separate third-party tool to code with. This allows you to create an entire Unity game, zero coding involved, and it's all right within the Unity editor. It's super cool. And it's called Coplay. It is a company that I have a pretty good relationship with because they ended up taking over Unity MCP from me, which is really incredible. And so I've been able to work with them a little bit. And it is a really cool tool. So I am downloading the dependencies right here. And it's just a GitHub URL that you drop into the package manager. You just go over here, hit the plus button, install package from git url drop in url there and then now we can sign in and now i'm signed in and i get this chat window just directly inside of the unity editor it is super fun to play around with so we can go in and i don't know for some reason the test i always like to run is see if it can make a mario clone so i'll say make a mario level clone and then we're going to have it use 3D objects because I always find a good initial test is to see the, just force it to do 3D because 3D seems to be easier for the AI because I think the U, the 2D images and stuff, I don't know why, but AI just doesn't translate that very well. And it's not Coplay or Unity MCP or anything like that. It's usually the actual model itself. It just doesn't do well. So... Let's have it make a Mario level clone, use 3D primitive objects for now. And then we'll have it use an isometric camera that follows the player. But really just, I'm trying to show off this tool and how it works. So we're going to check auto approve and then the mode is normal. There's a few other modes, which is actually pretty cool. You can do step by step. One shot scene generation, an experimental mode that they're playing around with and a pipeline recording, which is actually really cool where you can literally click around and do stuff like click over here, rename this, move it over here. Some kind of process that you repeat over and over again, you can record that and have AI magically do that process. So if you, your studio has a pipeline that you go through and you are just going through and recording all of this and doing the same thing over and over again you record it and then just have ai run it and it's amazing and then there's also like an orchestrator mode which is a little ag agentic but for now we're gonna stick with a normal mode and then we're gonna use my favorite model right now which is claude 4.5 sonnet and there's also prices next to all these so you can either use their monthly subscription or you can just use api keys and go straight to the source so we've got all that set up let's hit go and see what happens you can notice a couple of things in here. You can hit this button or press shift backspace to have it just pause or immediately stop thinking. You can also restore to the last checkpoint. If you've used something like cursor, you can always restore to the previous checkpoint. If it does something wrong, you just restore back to the previous checkpoint. So if we're scrolling through here, looking at it, it creates all these game objects. It tries to add textures to them, but has some kind of issue. And so it's trying to solve that issue by writing its own script to actually apply the textures and then it actually executes the script and then is now checking to see if the materials are on there which it looks like it's not but it looks like it's a decent little level oh there we go there's the textures it figured it out and we've got a nice basic level and that's what i find these ai tools are good for it's not necessarily going to make a whole perfect publishable game for you, especially right off the bat in like a one shot prompt like we're doing here. It's really for helping you iterate and helping you try out new mechanics really quickly. And so if I were to go through and set all this up, it would probably take me, I've been doing it a while and it'd probably take me 30 minutes to go through and write all the scripts and set up the level and make sure everything's applied correctly and all that. Okay, so looks like it can only do 20 API requests at a time. So we just hit proceed and it'll keep going. So it's basically so it doesn't just run out of 
money and there's some checks in there to make sure it doesn't go too far and spend all your money, which is nice. I appreciate that. You can see how much the total chat has taken up and what percentage of the context that we're actually using as well. So we're at 4%. Context use is 4%. You can also add attachments here. So if you have a screenshot you're trying to make or trying to replicate of a level design or you take a screenshot of something that you want to show. It can also take screenshots itself, which is actually really cool. So it can take a screenshot of play mode here, show you or show itself like what is going on. Cool. So it looks like it's going through and making these cubes. So it looks like we might be able to go and jump under the cubes and have something happen, which is pretty neat. So we'll see how that does. It's still having a little bit of material issues. I found that a lot of AIs, especially when I was building MCP, materials is such a big, difficult thing. I don't know why it's so difficult, but materials are very difficult, especially since this is just a, a pure blank URP project. See, there we go. It took a screenshot of the scene to see what we're looking at here. And you can see, oh yeah, there's actually materials applied and all that kind of stuff. So it looks like it thinks that it's done. It tells me, gives me a little brief that we can do your arrow keys and then jump in the space bar. There is a isometric camera that's supposed to follow us. So let's just hit play, see what happens. This was one prompt. We didn't do anything. And I can't see anything. Let's put the game view down here. And then if I, okay, so moving around works. Jumping does not seem to work. But it's cool that we've got a little enemy walking back and forth, which is fun. And I'll just take this feedback here, say the camera is positioned poorly. I cannot see anything. Also, the player cannot jump. And then we'll see how it does with that. And it's really, you're going to get the best results with these AI things if you give it very small, specific prompts. I like to use that as like my first prompt to try out new models and new things just to see how well it can do. But if you're doing this in like a live environment or you're trying to create a demo, I would break up your plan into a lot of smaller steps and you can even have the AI do that instead of saying here build this you can say help me plan this out and then it can break it up into steps and then you can say now execute step one or implement step two and then just iterate on that and that I find tends to work a lot better so we'll see how this does oh I just realized that this is a pipe I was like why did it hit it add this little pole in here that's a little pipe you can jump into it seems I'm sure that's not been implemented you can also see the scripts over here. So this is all the scripts that it's made. It made a create additional materials script, which is just a helper behind the scenes script. Also the create materials script. And then we've got the enemy of patrol, which makes this little ball go back and forth, which is cool. Now it's creating a fixed camera setup script, the follow script, player controller, and a script to actually set the camera target. So on play mode, it goes and finds the player, it seems. And then another setup looks like it has two setup scripts in here it gets a little messy so you can usually tell when a game or some kind of project has been vibe coded because there's extra scripts and extra markdown files and stuff just laying around this is much nicer to work with than going out to an external thing and typing in your prompt and then waiting for a little bit and then swapping over unity letting everything rebuild and then seeing if it actually works just having this editor right here in Unity is very nice. All right, so it thinks it's got it now. Let's try. So it looks like the view is so weird. 45 degree view. I don't particularly like it. Okay, so jumping works. We can jump up and then let's go under and try to hit this block. See what happens. Nothing happens. And then what happens if we touch the enemy? Nothing. Okay. And then if we hit the flagpole, do we win? Nope. But we do have basic movement, and then we've got all the core gameplay things set up, which is pretty fun. I could keep iterating on this and keep honing in and circling in on perfection and making it look better and better. But it's really, this is what I wanted to show off and show you all. You can also just go through and start a fresh chat, and then you've got a history. And so now we can go back to previous chats, since I actually want to go back to this one and continue. And this is helpful for if you have different context or if... You have one chat where you're working on UI stuff and one chat where you're working on 
a particular gameplay mechanic in another chat for level design. You've also got some settings in here that you can go through like this max request limit that it was asking me about earlier. Uh, and then you can also adjust the font size and do some other stuff. And this is also where you can drop your Anthropic API key in here to use those credits instead. Oh, and one more really cool thing that I love about this is after every single chat, so when you start a new chat, it looks at the previous chat and tries to figure out what it could have done better, creates this continuous learning prompt, and it adds it into a little bank of stuff to keep in mind as it's building out new prompts. And like, for instance, this one, it says when assigning a new script component to a game object, immediately configure its public fields with the appropriate references or values to other scene objects. And so this is something it struggled with in the last prompt. And so this next one, it should be a lot more accurate because it like keeps this in mind. And so if you, as you go through and you create these chats and every single chat has a kind of continuous learning aspect to it, but you can just start to hone in and get really good and have it generating stuff for you really well. So that's another thing that's really cool. But yeah, this is Coplay. It's really neat. It is a little more premium of a product than a Unity MCP. Plus you don't have to set it up. You just drop the URL into the package manager and it just works. You just click and log in and everything is all set up. And I also think it can handle some stuff a lot better because it's directly integrated with Unity instead of having to call out to a Python server and then to a third party. And it's all self-contained, which is just really nice and makes the experience faster and, uh, and just a whole lot smoother to work with. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.